please. So please be careful. All right, we are being live streamed now. She disappeared. <laughs> uh, she did. Facebook didn't like her. Sharky, you better take over for Marissa. All right, I can take over for Marissa. How's everyone doing tonight? That's okay. No one has to un unpause. You know. Yeah. I Sorry, I couldn't find the button. <laughs> <laughs> woo, woo, woo. We got two great features tonight. I'm really excited about it. Hopefully, Marissa does come back though, because I'm not a very good host. General Weissimo. Oh, but you're cute. You can't deny that you're, 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 we can't deny that you're cute. I mean, look at those <laughs> look, look at those cheeks. I just want to reach in my computer and pinch them cheeks. <laughs> you're such a sweetheart. <laughs> that that weasel, on the other hand, I'm gonna make fun of you until the end of times because I hate that weasel. <laughs> That's fine. You can call me. What did you call me last? Uh, the last time you saw me, General General Weasel. <laughs> Okay, you can do that. Only you can do it. <laughs> I think she's actually gone. Jeez. So she said she got booted, but she's coming back. All right. So in, in the, the, the spirit of pretending to be Marissa, um, everyone that is here, uh, just be aware that on Wednesday, we do have a fundraiser going on with Jane's Spoken Word. Um, it's a workshop. You can donate whatever amount that you are able to donate to uh, join that. Um, and it will go towards the publishing of the gun violence anthology um, that Red or Green is working with. So if you have time next Wednesday, definitely um, get some cash over to Marissa so that we can get that, those tickets, get everybody doing that. Oh, and she's back. All right, this is like not cool, man. This is how old my computer is. It, I don't know why it booted me out. This is very uncool. Let me see if I can even get my video going. Come on, video. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's try this again. Welcome everyone to The Word is Right. Uh, we are live streaming clearly, of course, tonight. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and hit record. So it'll record to this computer. And fabulous. All right, let's go. Uh, <laughs> yes, Shocky has the power. Thank you, Shocky, for holding down the fort. Well, it decided to kick me out. Tonight, we have two incredible features for you. We have all the way from Albuquerque, New Mexico, Kristen Patton's in the room. This is her incredible book, uh, and it's it's in green, damn it. Uh, but it is the beginning of this. Uh, it is a beautiful chat book that she has. Uh, so please support the poets. And as as luck would have it, Jeff Cottrell's uh, hate story is in green as well. But for some reason, it's not really washing his out. I'll say now it's washing it out. But his uh, his book, Hate Story, is a phenomenal book. I've been reading it. I've been loving it. Please, please, if you love satire, if you love comedy, Jeff. Uh, Cottrell is all about it, and we love him and his and his work. <clears throat> he is a Canadian-based poet, so uh, we still love him, though, right? Uh, not poet, uh, spoken word artist. No, not comedian either. Uh, he is a spoken word artist. He is a true a true hero of the of the word. All right. Uh, so uh, I, I wish to say tonight, something I'm about Jeff Cottrell. I'm sorry. Generally, if anyone else wants to read, um, let me know, and I will get you on the list. I'm sorry, um, Marissa. Well, for things that are coming up here at uh, The Word is Right. So this is a very interesting um, week because it is the fifth day of the month. So we usually have shows the first and third of the month or the second and fourth of the month. But this week is a long month, August. So we have the a fifth day of the month, which means <clears throat> we have an extra moist Mondays tomorrow night. So uh, there's an extra erotic open mic tomorrow night that I'm hosting. And we're featuring Kenya Wilcox. If you have not heard this woman 
you've got to, you've got to. She pairs music, hip hop and erotica all together in her work. She's phenomenal. And that'll be tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern. August 30th is uh, Poetry on Video. It's a tutorial poetry workshop that Shane Maynard is putting on. And that is at 7 p.m. Eastern. She'll be teaching you how to incorporate video into your spoken word. And it's a free workshop. Um, Wednesday, August 31st is the uh, fundraiser workshop with Jane's Spoken Word from New York City. So if you would like to come to that as a sliding scale, uh, pay what you can to attend the workshop, even if it's a couple bucks, the, uh, the, the money we raise for that is going to go help fund American Graveyard, which is our gun violence anthology. Oh, good. Here comes Joanna. <clears throat> so don't forget uh, the first Saturday of the month. So next Saturday, um, we will have the great debaters. We have no poetry show over the weekend of the uh, 10th and 11th, because why? Would it be in New York City? New York City, here we come. Uh, Red or Green Books has over 30 authors signed up to read at the booth. So please, please come if you're in the New York City area and you wanna go, uh, please come by. Generalissimo, Terry Rose Jertson, myself, uh, Jeff Cottrell will be there um, on hand, signing books, reading at the booth. Over 30 authors are coming through just our booth, right? So please, please support the poets. If you have not had a chance to pick up my book yet, Butterflies and Lice, please do so. Um, all of the proceeds from um, the books this year are going into sponsoring books for next year. And the Calls to End Gun Violence Anthology titled American Graveyard, we had over 100 submissions. <clears throat> so we are, we are whittling that down for the first of many volumes that will be coming up. All right, so uh, yes, if you have not gone to the website yet, please do so, redorgreenbooks.com. Red is R-E-A-D. You can see all of the people who are gonna be in New York City uh, read all of the books that, that we are putting out this year. I'm going to go ahead and lube up this open mic. If anyone um, wants to read who's not on the list, please let me know. Ground rules for tonight. Um, it's a small list, so we'll keep it to like five minutes. We'll go, um, we can go ahead and um, I'll read Terry Rose, and then we'll break. We'll bring up our first uh, feature. I usually do whoever is in the room first, which is Jeff Cottrell, if that's cool, Kristen. <laughs> it's a small list, so we'll kind of grind through everything. And then we'll bring up Shockey Generalissimo, and then we'll have Kristen do her featured set. Um, and then we can go back around. Um, people usually trickle in um, around the, the seven o'clock Mountain Standard Time hour. So I'm thinking the list will continue to grow, but we'll go back around and do a round two. Uh, features have about 20 minutes. I'm not going to buzz you or beep you or, mute you or do anything asshole-ish like that. <laughs> but just um, if you want to check your time, I'll be keeping that for you. Um, this is a live oh, open mic. <laughs> Anything can happen. Uh, you can say dick and shit and fucking pussy and all those great, wonderful words. The only thing you're not allowed to say is any hate speech whatsoever. Um, you can read hate story. That's fine. Just no hate speech. If I feel you're a threat to anyone in this room, you will be gone, baby, gone and not allowed the fuck back in. We run a really tight ship here, but it's very professional. We haven't had a problem. So let's keep it that way. The chat is for you to use at your leisure. Do not abuse the chat if I find out that you're being um, abusive or misusing the chat in any way. Again, you will be gone, baby, gone and not allowed back in. All right. That's pretty much it for me in the ground rules. Let's kick, let's kick this show off. <clears throat> and I, again, I do apologize for this, this cough that I have, but uh, you know, hey, we, we, we push through it. Uh, this is a poem from my book, Butterflies and Lies. And I figure since I have some of my New Mexico peeps in here today, they would understand the underlying um, connotations behind this. This poem is titled, Let's Go Lobos. I cannot think of anywhere else I would rather be than with you, but you are already gone. When you leave, the lobos come to gnaw on my spongy bones. They pick at what's left of my right to live or die. Right to die for poets should be a thing. Terminal velocity of poetry is a real condition. I would have donated my autograph to that dotted line a lifetime ago even before you. Low flies still walk the line you left. Chalk outline of my corpse mangled by vultures and thieves. I reach for you still after death and hope. 
and love. You decided to slay another dragon lady waiting on a miracle. Might as well wait for that generational change to come down the chain gang of rape revival in stride with every gospel line. God dispels spells of these dicks I gotta grind against just to find my shape of water that breaks each time. Bathed in anointed, annoying blank pages. They scream at me. They criticize me. They tell me how ugly I am, how I should wear my stretched out skin and baby making days made out of aluminum, made by man, but never with man, never loved. So I want to apologize for loving you. You are the empty space between what I really think and what I say. I am willing to live and die by you. I freely hand over the hammer and plead, you take a swing, put me out of my misery, since I know nothing of how to navigate the negotiations of my heart. How do I talk myself out of silence and into help? For you never thought I would be gone. And I never thought you would just be, you would be just another poet predator statistic, preying on the remnants of what used to be a woman. <laughs> that's uh, from my book, Butterflies and Lies. If you've not had a chance to pick it up yet, please do support the poets, support the press, support what we're doing because it's just super important. All right, here we go. We got the list, Terry Rose Jerson. And then after uh, Terry Rose, we'll bring up Jeff and then we'll go back to the list. I got Shaki and then Generalissimo. If I missed anyone, please let me know. I didn't know I was going first. You missed me up with that. Okay, so. I was in um, a tumble words workshop today and I have some new shit. It's still kind of raw, so bear with me. I rewrote this about 20 times already. <laughs> Zeus had a thunderbolt. So Terry Rose, I can't hear you. Even though it says you're unmuted. Uh-oh. Is that a me thing or can nobody hear her? I can hear her. Can anybody else hear me? You're good. I, hear I hear her. Okay. All right. Sorry. Zeus had a thunderbolt. Zeus had a brother, Hades, ruler of the same place. The river Styx is the way to get there, although I can find at least a dozen other ways. Zeus had many lovers and a jealous wife. Venus and Aphrodite were goddesses of love. Medusa was cursed by Zeus's wife, Hera. Those she would look upon would turn to stone. The gods in mythology would test humans in unforgiving ways. Atlas and Hercules were part human, part god, or demigods. This occurred when gods would find a sexual liaison, liaison <laughs> with attractive human females. We seem to be the muses of gods. Roman and Greek mythology overlapped and different names were given out for some of the same gods. Out of the two, I prefer the Greek. Perseus was a demigod, son of Poseidon, the god of the sea, possessing inherited attributes to move upon the water and to rule the creatures of the sea. Lastly, for the unknown gods that we were provided a temple in Greece at the time of Paul who wrote and spoke it's of its existence. He said that the Greeks knew that, that there was at least one God they did not acknowledge. And I'm gonna do one more short one. <sighs> Elegy to the dead. Grandmother, you've been gone too long. Boyfriend came to an untimely an untimely end. Three old maid great aunts stopped sending the checks. Ancient Three aunts great aunts stopped sending the checks. Oh, it's echoing back now. I hear it echoing back. Sorry. Ancient ancestors whom I've never met. What kind of life you lived remains a mystery. Uncle who spoke to me from the casket in which he lay 
assured me of the afterlife. That psychic who said you were watching over me, grandmother, what part of heaven do you reside? Step parent of 20 years gone back to the place of Danny boy in those emerald fields of green, the isle of his youth, remembering that he loved his mother most of all. Together again, I must believe. And lastly, when I go to the heavenly places, will I be reunited with these familiar faces? Yeah, Terry Rose Jordan. You guys, if you have not had a chance to check out her book, Chameleon Chronicles, do you have it right with you? <coughs> Terry Rose. I do. It's right here. Oh, I, I wish we had like light on that cover. It is such an amazing cover. Watch Flip Your Light on so you guys can see it. It is a bright, beautiful <laughs> cover. Artwork by Shane Maynard with Gorilla Poets. Um, it is such a wicked cover. Dang it. Like, I, I wish I had it here. Oh. I'll go get it um, and show everyone. everyone. I can share it on the screen. Yeah, do a share screen because like Kristen's here and Kristen knows Shane and Kristen would love this piece of artwork. <coughs> it it's is not so cool. me, it, You have to give me permission oh, to do that. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely, I think, one of the most unique covers that she's done. Um, and it is beautiful. And Terry Rosen is an artist as well. She has a lot of artwork inside of her book. Terry Rose is from New Jersey. She will be at the New York City Poetry Festival signing books as well. How dope is that? Uh, that is the cover of her book, Chameleon Chronicles, Words Never Spoken. It is so dope. Uh, thank you so much, Terry Rose. If you would like to get a copy of her book, you can go to the press uh, website or go to uh, go hit her up and she'll send you a signed copy. All right, now we're gonna bring up our first feature tonight. Um, Mr. Jeff Cottrell, uh, I'm just so excited. I have not had you around here for a while. I feel like the world has been, you know, absorbing you. And, and I'm so I'm sad in that aspect because we miss having you around here. But I'm so glad that you're bringing your work to the rest of the world because they ain't ready yet, but they will be. Uh, they got to get ready. Canada's got to get his shit together because you're great and you're wonderful. And we so much adore you here. And they need to have like a whole genre of stuff that is just what you do because it's it's not just spoken word, it's not just poetry, it's not comedy, it's satire, but it's not just that. It's so much performance. So strap in, y'all. Jeff Cottrell is a fiction writer, poet, journalist, and spoken word artist based in Toronto, Canada. He has headlined in countless literary series throughout Canada the UK, the US, France, Ireland over the last 20 years. His performance style is influenced by slam conventions, but subverts them with wit, ironic humor with a U and a satirical tone. His poetry and short fiction have been published in several in, in international anthologies. Hate Story launched in March, 2022 in his seventh or eighth attempt at a first novel and his poem, This Is Not Really Poetry was nominated for a Pushcart Prize last year. Jeff, Jeff likes writing, movies, travel, and puppies. You can find him at jeffcottrell.com. Please unmute your mics. Give it up for our first feature tonight, Mr. Jeff Cottrell. Yes. All right, thank you. All right, I'm gonna start with what slam poets want. Hey kiddo, come here. I wanna talk to you for a sec. That was terrific what you did up there, huh? Groucho loved it too, and so did the judges. You sure got away with poetry and stuff. I just wanted to introduce myself. Here's my card. I'm from the Teddy Wintergrass Agency in New York, and I'm always on the lookout for big, big talent like what you got. I really like what you've been doing on that stage tonight. I really dug that love poem you did in the first round. My favorite bit was when you described the poison as, and I quote, awesomely awesome, awesome sauce full of awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, I really dig that kind of subtle wordplay. It's a rare gift. And that second poem you did, about how misogyny is really bad? Wow, I mean, I didn't even know misogyny was bad. Look at the convoys you're making here. But here's what I really wanted to talk to you about. Like I said, I'm always scouting around for big talent and I'm already convinced after seeing you in only one slam that you've got that thing. Teddy Wintergrass is always looking for that thing. Everybody in the biz is looking for that thing and you've got that thing. I don't even know what that thing is. I don't even know, think that thing knows what that thing is. But what I do know is you've got it. 
So here's what I want you to do, kiddo. I want you to keep my card and give me a ring at your earliest convenience, and we'll do lunch sometime soon, because what I can offer you is opportunity, baby. You'll be so full of opportunity, you'll be constipated with it. There'll be so much opportunity, you'll be begging for a break, and you'll never get a break, and you'll be glad of it. How would you like to see your picture up on the billboards in Times Square? Stick with me, kiddo, and I can make it happen in a year. What about the movies? How about that big, beautiful face of yours up on movie screens all over the world? Movie goers everywhere, seeing your face and hearing you slam your poetry, huh? I can do it for you. What about TV? Late night spots on the Jimmy Fallon, the Jimmy Kimmel, the Jimmy Colbert, huh? Whatever Jimmy floats your monkey, I can do it for you. How about a record deal? No more of those crappy home burn poetry CDs nobody ever listens to. We'll get you a deal with EMI or Sony. Get you into a real recording studio in New York or LA. We can team you up with some of the biggest music stars of the day, too. How would you like to collaborate on a song with Hanson? Do the kids still like Hanson these days? Ah, oh, who cares? You can collaborate with somebody. Internet. Sure, I hear the folks are using this internet a lot these days. We can get you your own sponsored YouTube channel or whatever the new thing is. We can see to it that your Twitter is the biggest goddamn Twitter in the whole of the known world. People will retweet you until they can't take any more of you. And then they'll retweet you even more. Maybe they'll even find you on the AOL. Who knows? What's that? A book deal? Sure, I suppose we can get you one of those too, if that's the bag of wax you're panting for. But really, do people even read books anymore? I mean, other than that Daniel Steele lady. It's slam performance the kids are into these days, and we want to exploit that to the hill of the hilt of its peak or the peak of its hilt. But hey, you want to be in books too, we can get you in books too. Maybe the kids can read along with your poems while they're hearing you speak them on your CDs and the TV bits. So what I educational like, see? I always like to see the kids get educated. So kiddo, get ready to see a life changed. I'm gonna see to it that folks from America to Australia, from the Arctic to the Middle East are hearing your slam poems. They'll know them by heart. They'll even dance to them. And think about how rich you're gonna be. Money, 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 money. Money, you'll have plenty of it. So give me a ring and we'll set it up. And the best part is you don't have to go to these dingy bars anymore and perform with losers like these folks. They're just suckers. You're better than them and you know it. Or at least you're gonna be soon, kiddo. All right, I'm off to the club with Paris, Kanye, and my three mistresses. I'll be seeing you there someday, too. So that was What Slam Poets Want. <clears throat> I will follow that with uh, a piece from my CD that I just briefly, briefly showed you there. This is called, uh, this album is Knit Fanny, and it's from 2015. So I've been trying to get rid of these for seven years. I'll put some info in the chat later about how to how to get a copy of that as well as other stuff so this is from the cd it's called safety instructions <clears throat> congratulations on your purchase of the new darwina 2022 microwave oven your darwina microwave oven will provide first-rate microwave cookery for you and your family for years to come before you begin operating your darwina microwave oven please read the following safety instructions in order to maximize your continuing satisfaction with our product do not operate your Darwina microwave oven if the door cannot close properly or if it is bent in any way. Do not use if the hinges or latches are broken. Do not stand in front of the Darwina microwave oven for a long period of time as this has been known to cause tumors. Do not leave an operating Darwina microwave oven unattended. Do not use a brown paper bag to cook popcorn as this creates a risk of fire. Do not put your face or any other body part inside your Darwina microwave oven while it is operating. Do not bring your Darwina microwave oven into the shower or bathtub with you. Do not lift your Darwina microwave oven in the air and strike it upon your head repeatedly. This has been known to cause injury. Do not stand under a falling Darwina microwave oven after it has been dropped from a tall building. Do not place your Darwina microwave oven in a catapult and then have someone release the catapult while you are standing within the oven's flight path. This can be rather dangerous. Do not use your Darwina microwave oven as an ear piercing tool or for home dentistry. Do not play catch with your Darwina microwave oven. Do not attempt to fit your Darwina microwave oven fully into your mouth or any other bodily orifice. Please do not fill your Darwina microwave oven with explosives and then detonate them while you are within one meter of the oven and eating a deli stick. Do not hold your Darwina microwave oven while jumping off a high cliff and trying to fly. Do not hold your Darwina microwave oven while running into an operating airplane propeller. Do not use your Darwina microwave oven to help jam scissors into your crotch. Do not walk with your Darwina microwave oven late at night on random side streets in downtown Detroit. Do not attempt to tweak the nose of a wild grizzly bear while in the vicinity of your Darwina microwave oven. Do not use your Darwina microwave oven as a masturbatory aid. 
This is not necessarily dangerous, but it is a little weird. Do not attempt to operate your Darwina microwave oven while tied to a railroad track, dangling from a skyscraper, running through enemy fire across a battlefield, sticking your head out the window of a moving vehicle, playing Russian roulette, waving raw meat in front of a charging bull, diving into an empty swimming pool, eating Drano, drinking arsenic, horsing around in a room full of industrial machinery, or smoking. Do not attempt to operate your Darwina microwave oven while pulling the trigger of a pistol, only to find that the pistol appears to be out of bullets, and then, out of puzzlement and curiosity, peering down the barrel of said pistol while pulling the trigger again. Thank you for taking the time to read the safety instructions for your new Darwina 2022 microwave oven. Every one of these safety instructions was created as a result of numerous tests involving a multitude of live human and animal subjects, many of whom were orphans, kittens, and adorable doe-eyed little bunnies. So that was safety instructions from my CD. This album is Knit Fanny. And hey, I've got an early, thank you, one person. Uh, I've got an early Valentine. We love you, Jeff. Thank you. We Just love you, Jeff. Oh, yes, go. we do. Oh, we love you, Jeff, and we'll be true. So this is an early Valentine's piece, so I hope you're in a romantic mood right now. So um, this is called An Honest Proposal. My dear, my love, please accept my hand in marriage. There's nothing more romantic I can think of. Just think of it. Think of the lovely life we'll share. Think of the rapturous wedding we'll hold. Think of the passionate honeymoon. Think of the limitless lovemaking. Think of the joy of stepping into our first house. Think of the tears we'll shed when our first child is born. Think of the pride we'll feel watching our child grow up. Think of the slightly fewer tears we'll shed when our second child is born. Think of the stretch marks you'll have. Just think of it. Think of the years of family dinners spent together. Think of the birthday parties and Christmas mornings. Think of the endless school hockey games and plays. Think of the countless sibling fights we'll break up. Think of the disappointing report cards. Think of the minimal amount of tears we'll shed when our third child is born. Think of the neglect our middle child will suffer. Think of the times our middle child will act out because of our neglect. Think of the moment the cop will tell us our middle child has been arrested for vandalism. Just think of it. Think of the dull daily routine into which our lives will plummet. Think of the day we'll stop going out without the children. Think of the evening sitting in front of the TV and never speaking to each other. Think of the passive aggressive verbal jabs we'll poke at each other. Think of the moment we'll forget what we saw in each other in the first place. Think of the screaming arguments our children will overhear when they're in bed. Think of the slamming doors and hurled plates. Think of the silent treatments and insincere apologies. Think of the therapy bills our children will pay. Just think of it. Think of the night I'll catch you receiving cunnilingus from my brother's weightlifting trainer. Think of the condescending tone you'll adopt to mock my sexual inadequacy. Think of the tiny basement apartment into which I'll move. Think of the vicious, exhausting court battle we'll prolong for months. Think of the enormous legal bills and time wasted. Think of the way we'll make our children choose which of us they love more. Think of the friends we'll lose and the gossip they'll share. Think of the size my belly will grow if I, as I just stop caring. Think of the botched plastic surgery that'll symbolize your desperate drive to stay young. Just think of it. Think of the thousands of lonely nights of TV dinners and masturbation. Think of the chronic online stalking of old high school crushes. Think of the, uh, oh, you're leaving. Well, I suppose you need more time to think. I'll be waiting here with this beautiful tungsten wedding ring. A life together. Just think of it. So that was an honest proposal and the second time <laughs> The Woo! second time masturbation. Thank you. The second time masturbation has been mentioned in the set, in case you were keeping track. Woo! All right, so uh, thank you. I'm going to follow that with uh, a short story, actually, that was recently published in this local anthology, uh, Front Lines, Courage Without a Parachute. So like three titles in one, two colons. Beautiful. That's, that's so literary. <clears throat> and the story is called Not So Great Expectations. The first time I read Catcher in the Rye, Dana recalled as she sat back in the pub booth and took another sip of her Pinot Noir, I saw youth and insecurity in new ways, and also the hypocrisy of human nature. Even the language blew me away. The way Salinger made that kid come alive made me love books forever. 
She closed her eyes and smiled as Nathan watched her. He chomped on a buffalo wing as the overhead music switched from Lily Allen to Pink Floyd. She looked at him. He wasn't as dashing in real life as in his bestmatchpersonals.com pick, but looks weren't everything. What about you, she said. What about me, he mumbled, wiping his mouth on his sleeve. What's a book that opened you and changed you for good? He swallowed. A long pause followed. Well? Redneck Jim's Big Ass Book of Blonde Jokes, Volume 9, he finally answered. Dana assumed he was kidding, and she chuckled. But Nathan didn't laugh. He picked up another wing. No, said Dana. I mean a real book. That's a real book. It's in my bathroom. No, not a joke book. I mean like a novel. Catcher in the Rye, or The Great Gatsby, or Great Expectations, or maybe a poetry collection, or even a collection of David Sedaris essays. Nathan thought about it for a few moments, then he swallowed. Nah, he said, I'm sticking with my answer. Dana sighed and looked down at the table. Don't you appreciate real art, Nathan? I mean a proper book, something more deep and meaningful than a dumb joke book. Nathan put his wing back on the plate. He glared at her. Who are you, he said, to tell me what a proper book is? How can you suggest I can't get the same kind of magic from my book as you do from yours? I don't know how you can even compare the two. Dana was tempted to laugh, but it felt inappropriate. Catcher is a classic, full of depth and honest emotion. It's resonated with readers for decades. Your book gives you a cheap laugh when you're on the toilet. Have you even read Catcher? Of course I have. My grade 11 English teacher forced me to. It's just some whiny, spoiled punk brat rambling on about how he hates everybody and everything. You're oversimplifying. Come on, why would anybody read it these days, even if it wasn't boring? Dana ground her teeth. She wished she'd just stayed home and watched Queen's Gambit. And what's so special about your joke book, Nathan? Huh? Why pick a silly joke book over all the great works of literature? Nathan leaned back in his seat and squinted his eyes for a moment. Dana crossed her arms, hoping he was stumped, waiting to declare a victory. Then he spoke in a low, controlled tone that blindsided her. When I was a kid, he said, we didn't have much. No computer, no TV, no board games, just our tiny trailer with the necessities. Dad was always out of work and mom was always bawling him out. My brothers were usually out goofing off, playing street hockey or whatever. I didn't have any real friends, so I was stuck at home doing chores and listening to mom and dad fight. Nowhere to go, no one to turn to. Dana stared at him. One day, Nathan went on, I was outside watering the lawn when I heard this weird noise coming from next door. I saw our neighbor, Skid Face Sam. He was out on a lawn chair and laughing his ass off. Skid Face Sam was the poorest, ugliest, filthiest guy in the trailer park and he was always miserable and grouchy, and everybody avoided him. This was the first time I'd ever seen him laughing, and it scared the hell out of me. Before I could get away, he spotted me and waved the book he was reading. Redneck Jim's Big Ass Book of Blonde Jokes, Volume 3. He let me read a few of the jokes, and soon I was laughing harder than him. I'd never heard jokes like that before. The way Redneck Jim used such simple words to paint crazy pictures in my head. I never realized a book could do that. Skidface Sam let me borrow volume one and then two and three after that. Nathan paused. The series only went up to three at that time, you know. You don't say. That was when I became Skidface's best friend, his only friend. We sort of had our own little book club. Soon he stopped peeing in the trailer park's drinking fountain. Well, for a while anyway. And from then on, I was addicted to Redneck Jim, devoured every new volume of the Blonde Jokes, and also all five of Redneck Jim's sassy smorgasbord of Polish humor. Those books really made those hard times easier. Anytime I was upset or bored or just wanted to pack it all in, all I needed was Redneck Jim to make everything better. Can you say that of your J.D. Salisbury? Salinger. Who cares? The point is, Redneck Jim said so much more to me in his silly joke books than your boring, whiny punk kid in Catcher in the Rye. Redneck Jim taught me that no matter how shitty life can get, you can still find reasons to laugh. Dana couldn't think of anything to say. He also taught me, said Nathan, that blondes are really, really stupid. She blinked. Then she cleared her throat. Right, she said. Well, my late mother was a blonde, 
and she had a PhD in comparative literature, wrote 13 books, won awards. Nathan shrugged and went back to chomping on his now cold chicken wing. Dana stood up, put on her jacket, fetched a $20 bill from her purse and slapped it on the table. I don't think this is going to work out, she said. Me neither. We're different. I guess we are. Without looking up from his plate, Nathan gave her a small wave using a greasy chicken bone. She rolled her eyes and left. It was early in the evening, although starting to get dark. Dana walked slowly down the avenue, peering into the shop windows and feeling more depressed with every happy looking couple she passed. Holding hands, stealing little pecks on each other's cheeks, or just sharing a mutual, peaceful silence. A small independent bookshop caught her eye and she stepped inside. This was exactly the kind of urban indie bookshop she loved. Cramped, messy, disorganized, nearly empty of customers and smelling like an old wooden house that hadn't been dusted in years. She started to look for the classic section when she passed the humor one. And there it sat, like a trap set for her. And I'm going to, this is how it's spelt. Redneck Jim's Knifty Knutty Collection of Knock Knock Jokes, Volume 7. She stared at the cover of the enormous tome, and a cartoon sketch of Redneck Jim stared back at her with brain-dead eyes and a shit-eating grin with a front tooth missing. Huh, Dana said aloud. She picked up the book and flipped through the pages, opening to page 257 randomly. The first joke on the page read, Knock, knock. Who's there? You're a... You're a who? You're a stupid loser. Ha ha. Really, Nathan? This is your literary hero? The next one, knock, knock, who's there? Cow, cow who? No, you're the cow because you're so fat, ha ha. Dana flipped to the end of the book. Holy shit, there's actually 647 pages of this? She flipped back to the page she'd been on. One more, she decided, and then she put the book back. Knock, knock, who's there? Your mom, and I just boned her good, ha ha. Uh, sorry, miss, said a voice. Dana's head jerked up to face the young man sitting behind the sales counter. Huh? I thought you said something. I didn't say anything. Actually, he added, it sounded more like a laugh. I, I didn't laugh, she said, blushing. Did I? She shook her head and turned back to the book. Last one, she told herself. She read another joke and another and kept on reading. So that was my short story, Not So Great Expectations. And if I have time, do I have time for one more? Um, yeah, you've got a few more minutes. You take your okay. time. Great. So, uh, so I told you uh, that's my, my, my CD and I have a novel called Hate Story that Marissa mentioned. I'll put all the info in the chat after my set. Um, but right now, um, this is a new poem in which I have decided to take a proto-feminist approach to the Sestina format. While new shit. Hey, who said that? I did. New shit. <laughs> new shit. <laughs> or is it? Or am I just being silly? But I've decided to take a proto-feminist approach to the Sestina format while examining the male gaze as depicted in the independent Palestinian, Palestinian cinema of the early 1970s, as seen through a prism of Bakhtinian dialogism and post-structural Marxist theory with respect to, now I'm just having you. This is called Baby Slugs. Baby Slugs, Baby Slugs, Baby Slugs, Baby Slugs. Baby Slugs crawling through the soil and dirt, searching for leaves and grass to feed on. Baby slugs hatching from their tiny eggs, poking out through the layers of debris. Baby slugs slithering over the moist gray rocks. Baby slugs, baby slugs, baby slugs, baby slugs. Baby slugs looking up at the dimming sky, seeing filthy images in the cloud patterns. Baby slugs marching through the park at noon, striking fancy poses for the tourists' cameras. Baby slugs making inappropriate passes at your significant other. Baby slugs, baby slugs, baby slugs, baby slugs. Baby slugs running around like savage maniacs knocking over your grandfather's antiques. Baby slugs hunching over your study desk, finding new loopholes in your tax documents. Baby slugs wondering if a motorhead reunion could work without Lemmy. Baby slugs, baby slugs. Baby slugs, baby slugs. Baby slugs looking over the group bar tab, debating if the server deserves a 10% tip. 
Baby slugs talking too loud at the movies, kicking the back of your seat during the big reveal. Baby slugs screaming rude words at your child's kindergarten teacher. Baby slugs, baby slugs, baby slugs, baby slugs. Baby slugs planning a violent revolution, sparing only the people with the cleanest socks. Baby slugs plotting world domination, using an egg beater, a rooster, and five Twinkies. Baby slugs naming the galaxies after their favorite Belgian wrestlers. Baby slugs, baby slugs, baby slugs, baby slugs. That was Baby Slugs, and that was my set. I'm Jeff Cottrell. Thanks Woo! for inviting me, Marissa, and I'll put up info about my stuff in the chat. Awesome. Thank you guys. Unmute your mics. Please give it up for Jeff. Yeah. Woo, baby slug. Woo. Woo. <laughs> baby <Yeah. slugs. laughs> yes. If you have not had a chance to go pick up his book, please do so. You know, we usually, if we were in a cafe or a brewery, we'd have the hat going around and we'd be tipping features, right? Please uh, go and buy his book. That is the best way you can help support this poet. Um, also, Jeff, if you want to drop your Cash App or PayPal, well, you don't have Cash App, you're Canadian, drop your PayPal in the chat, please. Um, folks, you can feel free to, to put a couple bucks in his, in his PayPal. Yeah, the copy of the CD is $10, including shipping. Uh, his PayPal is jcottrell, that is C-O-T-T-R-I-L-L-7-3, the numbers um at hotmail.com yeah he still has a hotmail account uh but we won't go there that should be your next one jeb right about why you still have a hotmail account <laughs> like they never changed it they've changed hot hotmail to outlook or something but they never changed the name of my email so that's I just, unique for me well you know i was looking today at awards to nominate some of these uh poets their books for uh and there is an award that will not allow you to use a hotmail uh account so I'm just saying, you know, maybe update that. <laughs> well, I have a Yahoo one as well. Oh, okay. is, Yahoo, is Yahoo still a thing with the kids now? Uh, yeah, Yahoo, Yahoo. And I have I have a Gmail that I never use, but uh, you know. Well, good. So you have backup plans. So definitely uh, drop a PayPal. If you do not have PayPal, you are welcome to uh, cash at me, and I will go ahead and forward that to him, uh, Marissa Prada. And we we do help. And if you have Venmo, we can get you hooked up. Carrier Pigeon uh snail mail check that's fine and you know if there's 10 people in the room if everyone just puts you know say three bucks for each feature that is a, a very nice little feature pay for them and if you say well i'm not gonna send jeff cottrell three or four bucks that's fucking cheap you're fucking wrong because if everyone who fucking did that he actually sent him some money he'd be uh, a I mean, little bit richer than mind. he is right now so keep in mind is three know. keep in mind is three american bucks okay three american dollars right coming right. To me, this so. is right we're waning we are waning <laughs> this is true so you know maybe make it four or five <laughs> at this rate right inflation's a bitch yeah. all right uh we're gonna keep going down the list today please go to jeffcottrell.com get his uh cd i have a cd uh get his book i have his book uh please just do that all right we're gonna go back to the list i got shocky g and generalissimo and Shaki is in our Out Loud anthology. I'm so excited also to announce that Shaki is going to be one of our hosts for the Out Loud show that we are bringing to The Word is Right uh, starting in October. It'll be the first Sunday of the month. And we have four, perhaps five um, uh, hosts for this. And it's going to be a talk show uh, panel type of, of uh, forum. And we're moving it into the podcast and YouTube show uh, space. So if you'd like to support that, go to the Word is Right's Facebook, Instagram page. We have information coming shortly to that. The very first topic for the Out Loud show will be coming out. And so it's an incredible opportunity to get to know these, uh, get to know these artists. All right, Shaki, are you ready? Yeah, but maybe next time after I bombed on trying to co-host with you, when you dropped out, you shouldn't tell people I'm hosting something else. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was my, I don't know, my computer just totally stopped. I, it was like too much for my computer to handle trying to get off of the in, off of the iTunes. It was like, I can't handle it. Um, but that is not your fault, it's totally mine. And then after Shaki, we'll have Jennerlissimo. 
Um, but generally, Simo has to leave in two minutes. So do you want him to go? Well, gee, he didn't tell me anything about that. Well, geez, G. All right. I, I, I did I actually put something in the chat about Oh, I see your hand is raised. Uh, I, yeah, I'm I put, sorry. I put something raised. in the chat earlier, and Jeff saw it, too. So. Well, no. Uh, well, you didn't DM me, my friend. But you're welcome uh, to me now, if you would like. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, okay. when it kicked me out and we came back, it erased uh, all the that makes total sense, Melissa. Okay, so, I thought, yeah, I thought yeah. you, you know, I thought it was you were harboring uh, the whole ship again. So you know, no, you know, but generally, you know, Simo, will, are you? You're coming to New York City, right? I am coming to New York City, but I really need to read right now. So, the first poem I'm going to read, I wrote in a uh, Ray Jane's thing last night. Um, so it's called "Do I Need to Apply Direct Pressure to My Vanity?" Mirror, mirror on the wall. Disney, please don't sue me for copyright infringement. Sometimes I find myself in a trance when I look in a mirror because I start searching for answers that don't exist in my eyes beyond my reflection. Orthodox Jews cover mirrors whilst mourning. Certain cultures believe mirrors can capture your soul. People who look in mirrors for too long are considered vain and narcissistic rather than contemplative. But a mirror is just a mirror. I will never discover answers or find a piece of my soul that has that took an impromptu road trip. For me, a mirror is a necessity for brushing my teeth, washing my face and shaving. If it's a break, I'm less worried about seven years of you know what, rather than cutting myself because I'm a bleeder. And I'll read one poem that I wrote this afternoon in Tumble Words. So, according to Louis Armstrong, when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. Mom, you were the goddess of optimism and you were the goddess of curative smiles and you were the goddess of maternal hugs. And you were just another human being who was a goddess to her sons. They did not worship you. They did not always appreciate you, but they adored and revered you and had lyrics to when you're smiling engraved into your gravestone. Thank you. Oh, gee, you guys on YouTube, I give it up for Generalissimo, Brian Franco, my friend. Oh, and I just wanted to, just wanted to I, I, say something yeah. what's going on about Jeff Cottrell. Jeff, are you still there? I'm still there, yeah. Well, Jeff is the spokesperson for the Society Against Cruelty to Pink Blankets and also a spokesperson for the Adopt a Pink Blanket program. So, <laughs> so he has helped several pink pink blankets from hurricanes find new homes we need the we need the sarah mclaughlin sad music playing while he says that <laughs> uh, actually I, I heard that they're going to use the ice cream song for the pink blanket things. <laughs> the ice cream song <laughs> by the way i'm going to be i'm going to be in new york as well i marissa might have mentioned but i'm going to be there as well i, I don't have a gig there but i'm hoping to get on at least one open mic so yeah, well, you you can come by the booth and and for sure if there's a if there's an, a vacancy like if someone's a no show you're welcome to read and do book signing, and you're welcome oh, okay. to be there if you want. <laughs> like Stephen cool. Blade is going to be there all weekend. He's going to bring his guitar. Uh, Shane's um, uh, her other half. He's going to be there. I think he's going to have his guitar too. So we're going to have some music at the booth. But you're welcome. I put you on the 9 a.m. staff ferry with all of us anyway for both. Oh, yeah. That's the one I reserved. I could reserve the nine o'clock on Sunday as well if you guys are going then, but we'll, we'll, we'll chat about that. Yeah. Anyways. Um, yeah. Sorry, G. Go I'm ahead. Gonna, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head out. So uh, thank you very much I for letting me know. I love you. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so it's very cool. We got Jeff Cottrell, generally smoke. Christy Scribbles is in the house. She's from upstate New York. She will be in New York City at the book signing as well. Her book, um, uh, um, Sacred Elements of Me, we published this summer as well. And uh, Shaki, who's going to read now. And thank you, Shaki, for speaking up for him. Because when I got kicked out, I lost the chat. So I didn't see anything from before. And he didn't message me, which normally he does. <clears throat> but Shaki is in the Out Loud anthology. And uh, uh, so we're super excited to have her on board and part of the Word is Right family. Um, so yeah, that's, and, and, and Terry Rose Jerkson will be on hand as well in New York City. So there's like five of us in this room who are gonna be in New York City. I'm very, very excited for that. And then we'll go to our second feature tonight, which is 
is Kristen Patton, all the way from Albuquerque, New Mexico. She'll be reading after Shockey. If anyone else wants to read, please drop your name in the chat. If you want to do a round two, then just send me a direct message. All right, Shockey, you got it. All right, thank you. All right, um, so the first piece I'm going to do is called The Boys the Holocaust Left Behind. It is January, 1945, Auschwitz liberated. They said being Jewish is no longer a crime. People marched past mass graves, breathing in the scent of bodies and freedom, unsure which is worse, because even freedom starts to smell like a different type of death. Another group pulled from concentration camps and sent to prison instead, swapped the star of David for pink triangles and said, being gayish is still a crime. Gay men taken from one hell to the next. The words I love you became a death sentence in a library where their stories lay untold. These are the boys the Holocaust left behind. When the allies said maybe the Nazis were right about some things as if human rights is ever an opinion. Wonder how they sleep at night. They make their down blankets from feathers of Jim Crow's and pretend they are better. Lay their heads on the breasts of Lady Justice, pillow talking about eugenics saying history always repeats itself and feeling nostalgic in someone else's nightmare. Okay. And uh, this next one is called My Mother's Stoop. Once my mother told me she wanted to go home to the same street she ran as a kid, somewhere in the Bronx or Harlem, sitting on the stoop with everyone she knew, breathing in the city like cigarette smoke, feeling it barreling through her lungs like the sixth train, says she missed those days. She made the journey back and found a city different than the one she left. The air cleaner, stoops empty, littered with memories of a past that no longer exists. Said her block felt like the graveyard where her past buried its dreams, haunted by its former self. My mother, a ghost, knocking on doors, looking for people who had passed on, a reaper of sorts. My mother, a bodega bacon, egg, and cheese, standing outside a new market, selling breakfast sandwiches with Chris Prosciutto, says the city that never sleeps no longer has a heartbeat. Says she can no longer call this place her home. My mother, a homeless woman with an address, can never go back home without a time machine. Wish I could give her the keys to a DeLorean so she can go back to the future she envisioned, the homecoming that never came. I tell her, it's okay. Home is where the heart is. She says, but what if the city was the first place to break her heart? Never truly got to pick up the pieces. When the heart lay scattered on a treasure map, too obscure to find, where then is home? And how do you gentrify a memory? Woo. Thank you. And let's go, Shocky G. Oh man. Yeah, you guys unmute your mics, please give it up for Shocky. Yes, Ooh, man, I'm so I'm so excited that not only are you part of Red or Green Books, you're part of the Word is Right family now, and uh, I'm yeah I'm so excited and Tesoro right, <coughs> we're also part of a worldwide women's organization called Tesoro, and uh, and yeah this phenomenal things are happening in the world of poetry and spoken word for, for many, many of us women. I'm very, very excited uh, to have you as my, as my teammate, Shaki. All right, next up, we're going to bring our featured, our second featured tonight. And for whatever reason, I mean, technology is against me today um, because it won't let me pull up Kristen's bio, but that's cool. I'll pull it up over here. All right, so uh, straight from Albuquerque, New Mexico, right? Our slam uh, goddess, our champion, we love her. She's so awesome. This is her book, The Beginning of This. Uh, uh, this is a chapbook by Kristen Patton. Uh, if you have not gone to find her, follow her Facebook. I'm not sure if you're on Instagram too, Kristen or not, but uh, definitely hit her up on social media. I'll have her drop her links in the chat. Uh, you, you can find her Facebook, Kristen Patton, and her book is titled The Beginning of This. Kristen Patton, an Albuquerque, New Mexico native, grew up writing poetry in the back of the classroom. After stumbling into poetry and beer in 2015, she began frequenting the open mics and poetry slams to support personal growth and mental health, as well as offer her hands to the community. 
She has been on Albuquerque's Mindwell Poetry Slam team three years in a row, which has competed as the Southern Fried Poetry Slam in North Carolina and performed at the New York City Poetry Festival in New York. She planned to travel, she traveled to Dallas, Texas to represent Albuquerque and the Mindwell team at the Women of the World Poetry Slam Championship in March 2020. Kristen currently holds the 2019 title of Poetry Goddess of Albuquerque. When she is not attending local poetry events, she is learning to enjoy this thing called life. She is also in Touching Tongues, the women's erotic anthology from Red or Green Books. Yes, uh, she's part of the RGB family. Y'all, unmute your mics. Give it up for our second featured reader tonight, Miss Kristen Patton. <laughs> Uh, my thank best you. Friend. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Um, it's an honor to be here. It's always an honor to do poetry with uh, friends and family and uh, all the good jazz. So, um, so this is new shit. Uh, I'm, since Tuesday, I'm still working on it. But his name was Curtis. He fought in World War II, loved his wife, Mary, had three children, and died when my dad was young. Fifteen years later, I was to be a boy. The name Curtis reserved for me. Born a girl and Curtina was already taken, so they named me Kristen instead. Gave me a common middle name to honor my grandmother's and the last name that follows me. My mother gifted me name cards. My name means Christian, means Follower of Christ means anointed, so I became a baptized Catholic. Followed my Spanish roots as deep as I could, bruised knees from the church pews, memorized verses, and my name was also meant for the church I've never claimed. It's just another book written by some guy in a temple, so maybe that's why I've struggled with religion. I found spiritual guidance instead. My abuelo called me general, ruthless, brutal, knowing damn well I was his favorite. And he was always the king of life, even if we never shared the same last name. And I've been called Christian, Christina, Christy, Christine, Kristen, and I am not a number. I, there's an I in my name because I think about everyone else but me. So I don't correct them. Calmly turn the E to an I, it's basically cursive anyway. Started to introduce myself as K because the letter was more simple, but I wouldn't change it. My name or the nickname. Both gifts from people I love, blood and presence. So I chose the color green. Let Sundays be my favorite day of the week. Chose kindness on the hard ones, romance on them all, insisted on being perfect. Started listening to my heart. Tried to exist even when I didn't want to. I know what I'm capable of and nothing is stopping me. So my name is Kristen, with an I if you can remember, but you can just call me Kay. Uh, woo. So that's my name poem. Um, woo, woo, woo. I highly suggest you write a name poem because it was kind of fun, it was cool. Um, I also like to write about uh, I like to write love poems about the person who doesn't exist kind of situation. Um, so I'm gonna read you, I'm gonna read you a love poem. 5.30 AM, it's the pancakes on a Sunday morning. She knows exactly how to wake me up. The smell of batter wafting through the house, a hint of cinnamon, vanilla. She's found the secret ingredient just by watching. Keeps the black curtains closed, door partially shut giving me every minute she can. I hear her low hum, the crack of an egg, the spoon scraping the metal bowl, the pants clink, she pauses. I don't make a sound, don't move, don't bat an eyelid as she checks on me. Her sigh is enough to know that she's happy. Butter melts in the pan, an eye in her palm. She's humming to last night's song, burns the first pancake, burns her finger. Silently sucks on it as she pours another, flips another. I've counted seven. Ingredients usually yield 10. Hold my breath. The door creaks. The floorboards creak. The bed creaks. She kisses the top of my forehead lightly, brushes my hair backwards. No exchange of words. My sigh 
tells her she's made me happy. You can write about someone's eyes, describe them in every shade, compare them to the moon, to the ocean, desert sand, the mountains and the lakes. But sometimes we run out of words to describe how we feel. Those hidden adjectives, verbs, nouns, a thesaurus of emotions. She's made Mickey Mouse pancakes because I make them every weekend because it makes me happy. Only she's added chocolate chips and whipped cream and berries, placed the burnt one on her plate, made coffee just the way I like it, stole a flower from the bouquet I gave her, served us in bed and fed the cat. His sigh is enough to know that we've made him happy. Uh, those love poems, let me tell you. Uh, let's see. So I'm gonna kind of turn So I, I don't know if you can tell, like I'm, I'm really gay. Um, and, and what I wear gets me in trouble often in public. And sometimes I'm just wearing a t-shirt and shorts and sometimes I'm wearing a button up and some slacks. So, um, so here's a story. And if you get anything from it, uh, just be kind to other people, right? Like mind your business, just be kind to other people. Uh, when I think of that day, I want to think about the cashier commenting about my sit down meal. You're usually a grab and go customer. I'm a regular here, a quick walk across the parking lot for a quick break from my desk, the ringing of the phones, the ping of the emails. I watch some of corporate America walk in behind me. It's lunchtime. When I think of that day, I want to think about how perfect that sweet tea tasted freshly brewed, it hadn't been sitting, how the ice created condensation on a plastic cup, created a ring at the base, free refill sipping from the rim on a cool, rainy Monday afternoon. And the crowd continues to grow. Number 67 hanging off my table so they know exactly where to bring it. When I think of that day, I want to think about the expediter smiling as he leaves that smoky Jack Panini at my table, stacked high, layered with turkey, pepper jack cheese, tomatoes, bacon, and you can't forget the guacamole, all smushed and toasted together on sourdough bread with potato chips on the side. When I think of that day, I don't want to remember words that begin with A, begin with D, Begin with F. I don't like lemon in my tea, but he did. The stranger who had many tables to choose from and chose to sit across from me, alone, an easy target. And I don't want to think about how it only took three days. I was waiting for it, but I'm never really ready for it. Let's see, I didn't even ask how much time I had um you have oh yeah you're only like not even 10 minutes into your set so you're, oh. you're good you can keep going okay um so uh marissa mentioned i am in the erotica anthology and so i figure um i can read you an erotic piece um this one's called queen Oh my gosh, I hope my mom isn't watching. Anyway, candlelit room, propped pillows, wine, and the braided rope where I left it last night. She stands before me, mischievous grin, unbuttons my shirt, a disrobing ceremony of sorts. Button by button, she pulls at the cloth, drips bedside candle wax on my chest, a burning desire bites her lip with flame in her eyes. Rope burns on my wrist as I try to bake, break free. I pay attention, she says. Loosens the knots to give me reach. Kisses me deep, her tongue wet and soft in my mouth. She asks to top me tonight. For me to lay on my back, for her to sit on my throne, on her throne. Makes me comfortable, removes my crown, fans out my hair. My hands sending shivers down her spine, her hands on the wall, head back, 
thighs quiver around my cheeks, the sweetest of wine and all of our castle drips down my chin. She laughs. Her tongue glides across red lips, mine across other. Messy sweetness feeding a different kind of hunger. Her smile tells me she's finished. Her eyes ask if I want seconds or thirds. We lose count. The candles burn to the bottom, metal wick exposed. Wax, dri wax drips off the bedside. She apologizes and I just light another. Uh, so yeah, those love poems about nobody, those are, those are it. Um, let's see, I have two more short ones. They're kind of similar. Um, so I like to, I like to fish. I like to be in nature. It makes me feel good. Um, I love to drive just to nowhere in particular. So my favorite spot is two hours away on a back road. Um, and I like to go really fast down it. So this poem is dedicated um, to that place. Something about a two lane road, miles of yellow bushes, miles of black pavement, miles of no one else, a double yellow line. Sign says 55, but I'm going an easy 75. Straight down the middle, radio loud, thumb drums on the steering wheel. I wonder if people check these abandoned cabins for dead bodies. Like, does anybody ever think of them? Of the ones who run off to the wilderness cabin by the river, fish for days, and then just perish. How morbid, right? But have you ever, have you never seen a cabin and thought the same thing, or is that just me? A song comes on. The mood changes. Country crooners sing some sad love song, and I can taste salt on my lips, feel wet on my cheeks. I do not change it. Do not dare bring myself out of what I'm feeling. Every lyric rings truth to my ears like I haven't laid awake multiple nights wondering the same thing. Small towns have this aura to them. A single gas station, convenience store, old pumps pay inside, black and white numbers roll in a click. There's no street lamps, no signs, no lights. And an old Ford tries to slow us down because there's a sheriff behind the next bend. Change the radio, an upbeat tune comes on. I've shared the pavement of mile, I've shared the pavement for miles of no passing line. The flowers change from yellow to purple to yellow, then a red stop sign, then the main road, New Mexico 550. Um, and with that, I'm gonna roll into my last poem. Um, Again, because I like to drive, I spend a lot of time on the road. Um, so this, this poem's called A Country Song Will Do That To You. A country song will do that to you. Same old sad story playing through your ears, a broken record you've lived through, a drunken evening alongside some lake in the mountains, hang the sign, gone fishing all year long. Run to the honey hole, the secret spot, Tell only those who need to know if they need to know. Cardstock feels heavier in your hand when it didn't come from you. When the fancy letters aren't yours, when the date you're saving isn't exactly what you asked for of somebody else. So you think of that too. The one you sung in the shower in a box filled apartment and here you sit. The flask loaded with tequila tucked away in a plaid pocket, the chicharra singing, the river, its chorus. Wild drives down Unser Boulevard aren't quite as fast anymore. Windows rolled up, smoke-filled interior. Your friend singing a tune in the backseat of an 86 caddy saying this was meant for him. And he wasn't buried beneath a willow. Instead, you placed yellow roses on his headstone under a cottonwood for months, drink cheap beer, warm whiskey from the back of your car, watch the sunset from your favorite spot nine miles up a hill. A country song will do that to you. 
a trip down memory lane that isn't always sweet, a heartbreak all over again, that scratch CD, that scratch, that scratch CD stuck in your car on a long road trip. It's their favorite song. It's your favorite song. You know the words without the tune. So you sing off key. And yeah, maybe sometimes you do smile, shed a tear, but you always enjoy that ride, that bumpy two lane dirt road with nobody for miles. The stereo blaring something upbeat because you know that honey hole is right around the corner because you know you're gonna forget about it for a while. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you guys being here this evening. Thank you so much. Yo, let's give it up for Kristen Patton. Woo! New Mexico's very own slam god. Yes, let's go. If you have not got her book, please do so. The beginning of this, it is an incredible book. Uh, she is an incredible spoken word artist, very crafted and um, deep and incredible. Uh, Kristen, what is your cash app PayPal? Uh, so I'm almost certain that they are both Miss K505. That's M-I-S-S-K-505. Um, um, however, the dollar sign in front of the M and then I'm on Venmo do not have PayPal, but um, you know, the biggest thing you could ever do for me is uh, spread kindness and support the arts. So thank for you. Sure. And buy or take a guess, right? Like it used to be a buy a cup of coffee, but buy or take a guess. If you only have PayPal, you can PayPal me, Marissa, I read her greenbooks.com and I will forward uh, the tips on to Kristen. You know, there's nine, 10 people in the room tonight. Uh, everyone putting, you know, three, four bucks in the hats for these, for these spoken word artists tonight is a very nice little feature tip. Fill her tank up with gas. Um, please support her, go buy her book, do something, just don't do nothing. Sometimes we get caught up in thinking we have to do a lot for someone and it's hard to do a lot all the time. But if all of us just do a little bit, uh, that collectively is a lot. So please just don't do nothing. And like she said, just spread kindness, um, pick up her book, let's go. I'm so freaking excited. Uh, we're getting, we'll go around another, we'll go another round. Uh, so I'll keep the list the same as it was if anyone else wants to read. Um, we're going to have Slegathor uh, come up here. Slegathor Atencio is going to follow that. I don't know how the hell you can follow Kristen Patton, but she's braver than me. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Unmute your mics. Give it up for Slegathor Atencio. That's my best friend. I didn't think I'd be able to talk right now. So I'm actually really happy that I can to perform. So thank you Me for too. letting me perform. It was a rough couple of weeks. So I'm sorry for bailing. I just didn't want to make you like, I guess I didn't want to make you scatter at the last minute. So I'm glad I'm feeling better to actually just say a poem or two. Is it okay if I do two? That's totally yeah, okay. fine. Okay, it's a short one and a long one, just because I like reading one, and this one I haven't really read out loud, and I've been having some pretty bad blues um, revolving around death, um, so this is a sad one, so I'm sorry. Uh, it's called Cold Trauma, so it's a new, fairly new one. Um, it was a sinking feeling running towards my mom's hospital room. It was a flat line holding my grandma's hand. It was a phone call in my car regarding my cousin. It was a text message in my bed regarding my sister. It was a Facebook post about my brother. I was alone every time, becoming more and more lonely and isolated one after another. The ground now holds more of my family than I could in my arms. So I run the other way because this kind of, this type of cold numbs, this type of run is an warm on comfort. This type of fight is a beat is a beating heart unable to rip from rib cage kind of hurt. Not dry ice body, I can't stop picturing you dying kind of hurt. I loved wholeheartedly until it became rock, rock solid thud. Sinking into my chest when you get close to me thud. Everyone leaves type of thud, casket hits the ground type of thud. I want to feel like I can hold you without you burning right through me kind of thud. Flight response, you're dead to me. Flight response, they're dead to me. Frozen response, I wish they'd stop feeling dead to me. So that was heavy. <laughs> so I'm just. Let's go. Reading. You're good. You're good. Let's go. 
And I just like to read things that I kind of like that I write, I guess. I don't know. This one is the boy who, who the wolf who cried boy. I say I feel robbed. And he says, I know what you mean. As if he didn't do all the mugging, as if I'm not the one standing empty, call me carcass to feed on. Call me conquest, always turned into a faulty home, expected to stand on some rotting foundation until you're falling through a lovely space I had the potential of being. I'm already on the ground, fall beneath me like, damn boy, you really live like this. Say, I was never trying to fix myself for you. So you're confused because I said I had loved you. I said I stood complete and incomplete all at the same time. Like I can listen some pieces of me and still love what I am and exist. So call me natural disaster. I woke up on balance, never preferred it. He says we both like the rainy days. So he dances for them. I meant the actual rain, tired of becoming your heavy cloud, tells me he likes the way tortured artist trope looks on me. So I told him I would have wrote just as beautifully about you if you treated me right. Said he likes being the villain. Waved the flag, but I couldn't tell the color. My whole world burns rose red without the glasses. Told him I don't like this supper, I just happen to. He says, how poetic. Calls me weak, I call it gentle. Says he doesn't know the difference until he's begging me to overlook all of his ugly. The difference is this was always my choice. So call me sacred. And not like my body's a temple type shit, more like I will sacrifice you to see some sunshine while you wonder why you're cursed. Like he didn't, like he didn't just disrespect me, call it execution. I took Doomtree's lyrics personal, come correct or kindly leave the table now because I will excuse you. Says he's on his knees for me, that I should be graced by the notion when I finally decided to get up and remember who the fuck I am. He says it's been a year. I correct him three, it's been three years, but you overlooked me for two of them, says he didn't notice. All while he's telling me that this is the first time he's never entertained anyone else while chasing someone. Forgets I sat through the whole fucking show like, damn, this little boy really lives like this. And I'm not trying to be a part of this act. Told him if I would have known any sooner, it would have ended the same way he doesn't believe me. So I sketched out what his antagonist looked like to my unrequited love, said it never happened that way until he couldn't look himself in the mirror. As if we were both in the dark. Like all of a sudden his time is precious. He simultaneously tells me that mine never was. Says he still loves me, implying he ever did. And I can't help but feel all of his lonely parvel out his mouth like my 2 a.m. laying in the snow lonely. Our spot at 3 a.m. lonely. Ask me if it's any consolation prize that his heart aches for what collateral damage became of me. I take no pleasure in this like he wants me to. Thank you. That's my best friend. Yes. Thank you. Let's go. And Joanna, please feel free to drop your socials in the chat if you uh, would like to. If not, that's totally okay. Uh, please follow these artists and these um, and these incredible human beings. Um, welcome, um, Nama. 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 Okay, good. I, 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 the little things uh, I really want to do right. And Stephen Blaine is in the house. Uh, so, so excited for Stephen Blaine. I'm sorry, Stephen. Um, I'm a little under the weather, but we are here. We're rocking it. We're going to go uh, and do this all again. Uh, don't forget, please, to our featured readers, if they want to come back, I put them on the list if they want to pop in again. Uh, we have Jeff Cottrell's Hate Story, his incredible book, Hate Story, and Kristen Patton's um, the beginning of this, uh, please support the authors uh, and the uh, spoken word artists. All of their information is on the Word is Rights event page. Let's go. Uh, so I put the list in the chat and <clears throat> we're going to go down the same list as we had before, but I will put Nema um, in Jen releasing those spots since he is not here. And then if Stephen wants to close this out, I, I can't possibly think of another way to end the show because Stephen is just magnanimous. All right, so since I have so many New Mexicans in the house tonight, I'm going to do one of my New Mexico poems. It is titled Hospice Homeland, and I wrote it this year. Fuck subdivisions. Fuck the gentrification of the mountains. Fuck garbage and pollution and barbed wire and fences. Fuck concrete roads and drought and idiots who throw their fucking cigarette butts on the ground to start fucking fires that wash away lands when monsoons come back around. I grew up in the East Mountains on 10 acres of land with wildlife and wild smells 
and trees and fresh air and dirt roads and no technology where we knew our far between neighbors. One time their horses got out. They didn't get hit by cars and I knew how to put them back in their paddock. There were only four houses on my street in that valley back then. I grew up sitting on my father's lap, navigating the mammoth of a steering wheel up the driveway to the house, learned how to drive a stick shift on dirt roads, up and down hills, got great at the clutch and driving in snow. Didn't worry about drag racing or rollovers or hit and runs. We could run our horses and not worry about holes or wires or fences not to kill ourselves on. People were friendly. People took care of each other. It was safe in the mountains. I drove out there a few years ago. There is hardly any grass left that is native or not replaced with concrete or rocks. The roads are paved. I miss the rumble of the road, how the washboard ridges shook the Jeep smell of dust in car vents as we drove to school in the mornings. I miss twittering sparrows and the sight of their mud nests. I miss finding snakes and watching cats eat mice. I miss our barn. I miss the cool breeze. I miss the silence. I miss the stars. I miss the darkness. The whole place is a fucking Stepford cardboard cutout crisis. I just want to cry. Like what the actual fuck is wrong with people? This land was beautiful. The cement plant on I-40 displays a red star each December for drivers to see, has now plucked the entire side of one canyon free of its trees into a pattern of greedy that is just mortifying. The ground is dry. Chemicals cover so much of this land from people not built to withstand Mother Nature and her insects or her temperature swings or her violent tendencies. Can you feel her pain? Can you heal her pain? Snow is so angry it refuses to come back. Rain has cried itself dry. The mountain is now a shaky old lady who can't even get out of bed because her family has abandoned her. So she just accepts her living situation. So fuck subdivisions. Fuck the gentrification of the mountains. Fuck garbage and pollution and barbed wire and fences. Fuck concrete roads and drought and fucking idiots who throw their fucking cigarette butts on the ground that start fucking wildfires that wash away lands when monsoons come back around. Thank you. It's one, it's one of my Limp Biscuit poems I call them when I say the F word a lot. <laughs> All right, we're going to keep rolling, rolling, rolling. That was a nice segue. All right, Terry Rose Jersen, you're up next. You caught me again, not ready. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to flip through my book and whatever comes out, comes out. Okay. Do you believe in multiple lives? Everything's about death and life today. Was I here before? I ask myself when I wake gasping for air, when I experience my own demise time and time again, through drowning, through falling, through being shot through many dreams that take me to places that I've never seen before, at least as far as I know in this life. Who is this? The stalker that chases me through my lifetimes, persistent in my nightmares. He, pre he premeditates murder. He exas- I can't, it's gonna be one of those nights, is it? Okay. <laughs> oh my God, okay. He exacts his revenge on me. One homicide or several were not sufficient for him. How many ways will he try to end me? When will I have peace? When is enough enough? When will God take it all away? God, I pray that you take away the foothold the enemy has on me. Amen. Woo. Sorry, I had a nervous breakdown in the middle of that poem. <laughs> 
Did you have another short for the one? Best of us. I have another one. Should I do another one? Yeah, that was short. Go for it. I can't hear you. Are you muted? Yeah, go for it. You that was short. Go ahead. Do it. You're fine. Still can't hear you. You can't hear me? I cannot hear you. Can you hear me? Can you guys I can hear, hear me? I can hear both of you. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I can hear both of you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> you better turn the volume up, Terry. Go ahead. Yes, my volume was down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah go ahead. That was a short one. Go ahead and read another short one. You're good. Oh, okay. Ooh, living like a tree. My hands always busy, my mind always working, my body always moving, no time to rest, have to keep moving. Death will come in its time now, more sooner than later. Resting is for the dead, I will push on, I won't lay down and die. My will is stronger, yes, a stronger will should get me through this life despite its troubles. I will be planted and strong like this tree, forever bending with the gales storms, hurricanes of the world. I will not topple, I will flex, almost to break, but not breaking. Leaves will fall, branches may shed, but the purpose is to stand tall as a testimony to those that were cut down. Thank you. Let's go, unmute your mics, give it up for Terry Rose Dirtson. Buy my book. <laughs> Just a reminder, we're going to be in New York City for the New York City Poetry Festival. Terry Rose will be on hand with me, Jeff Cottrell, Stephen Blaine, Christy Scribbles, Generalissimo. So many of us will be there in New York City at the Poetry Festival, September 10th and 11th. If you're in that area, please stop by, meet us, uh, buy our books. Let's keep going. Uh, Jeff Cottrell and his awesome hate story uh, is out now. You have the floor again. All right. So... So for those of you who came late, I featured earlier, but uh, I'm going to do an open mic now because uh, I have a couple new pieces. Um, so, and I think Naima actually heard these a few hours ago at uh, Gestalt, but uh, well, you're going to hear them again. Congratulations, or at least one of them. Uh, this is new. It's called uh, Yelp Reviews of Your Pet Guinea Pig. <clears throat> Karen Golden, North Bay, Ontario, one star. What a terrible guinea pig. He doesn't even do anything. He just sits there and stares at you. Can't even do any tricks or run on the wheel. What a mess. Gotta do better, guys. You invest more money and time in your guinea pigs, you get better results. It's not that hard. Just get it together. Chad Hahn, Mesa, Arizona. One star. And this is in all caps. This guinea pig sucks. What a fucking piece of shit. Call yourself a guinea pig? I hope somebody vacuums it up and it fucking dies. Ugly piece of crap and boring, too. Fuck you, bullshit guinea pig. You suck the bag. Kenneth Simpson, Leamington Spa, England. One star. I was rather disappointed with this guinea pig. I've met a wide range of guinea pigs all over the world, and while some of them had some considerable issues, none of them was as tedious or underwhelming as this one. The animal was not pleasing to the eye, and its interpersonal skills left a lot to be desired as well. I've noted a troubling decline in the quality of guinea pigs over the last 30 some years. One need only look back to the golden age of guinea pigs to find such luminous examples as Chomper in the Hamptons and Inky from the West Midlands. All finely bred guinea pigs with style and wit to spare. I couldn't help yearning for these iconic figures while sacrificing far too much of my precious time with this one. Pathetic, derivative and uninspired. Becky Cop, Canberra, Australia, two stars. This guinea pig started out well, but it failed to live up to its promise. In the end, there really wasn't anything to distinguish it from all the other guinea pigs out there. Take a tip from someone who's been around, mate. If you want your guinea pig to stand out, you've got to put some work into it. Jatinder Singh, Southy Saskatchewan, one star. If I could give zero stars, I would, or even negative stars. I mean, what the hell? Do not recommend this one, people. You can do better. You can do a lot better. Louise Marie Truffard, La Valette du Var, France, one star. The guinea pig is not formidable, is it not? It fills me with all of the fatigue and the ennui. One cannot find the proper words in English to express why the guinea pig is not satisfactory with one's expectations. As the people say in our country, le nez violet donne trois coups de pied au poulet avant de manger ma teinture pour les cheveux. Jim Backers, Northport, Florida, two stars. 
My wife and I were very disappointed with our trip to Papua New Guinea. There was too much crime and violence. The natives were rude and unsociable, and the food was served in such small portions. If you do end up going there, I suppose you could do worse than touring some of the World War II airplane wrecks under the water. But my wife and I are too old for diving. Next year, we're just going to see Italy again. Greg Jackson, Brooklyn, New York, five stars. And again, this is all caps. OMG, best guinea pig ever. Awesome guinea pig, it's fire. I love it so much, I wanna marry it. Yeah, man, guinea pig fucking rules. And finally, Sue Bremner, Cortez La Prairie, Manitoba, one star, and her review is just one word. Why? So that was um, Yelp reviews of your pet guinea pig. That was new. Should I do another new one or how are we for time? Yeah, if, if, it's, if it's short, like not five minutes, you're good. Uh, it's it's <coughs> maybe like three or four minutes. Uh, what do you guys, do you want another one from Jeff? From our feature, let's let's go. I love hearing Jeff Cottrell. He's amazing. It's I love it. So let's go, Jeff. Okay. <laughs> this is it's actually kind of an old one that I, I, I it's an unfinished old one that I didn't really think was working. So I just finished it. Still don't know if it's working, but anyway, it's called performance review. Company name: Planet Earth. Date: August 25, 2022. Regarding employee performance review. Employee number 77-777-7777-777. Employee name, God. Overall performance. During the employee's many years of service with planet Earth, he has demonstrated remarkable creativity and power at sporadic moments. It is clear that the employee shows a great amount of potential. However, much of the time, he fails to live up to said potential and in fact shows an astonishingly poor attitude towards his professional duties. As a supervisor alone, his lack of concern for the morale and job satisfaction of his underlings is deeply troubling and requires immediate corrective action. Areas of strength. The employee has shown exemplary abilities in the creative and aesthetic aspects of his position. Much of planet Earth is a visually attractive workspace due to the employee's exceptional and instinctive talents in this area. Areas needing improvement. A serious issue with the employee's work routine, one that cannot be ignored, is that he appears to have severe anger problems. The employee has a troubling habit of spiteful actions towards underlings who have displeased him, often with dire consequences. Planet Earth would like to suggest that the employee enroll in one of our corporate anger management workshops in order to learn how to deal better with these feelings of rage and jealousy, at least in a way that does not disrupt the routine of his colleagues. Equally of concern is that the employee demonstrates a shocking level of indifference towards his underlings, particularly when they are in the greatest need of his assistance. The employee has access to all of his colleagues' requests, pleas, and complaints, yet he deliberately ignores them and even pretends not to have heard them with a disturbing level of frequency, no matter how urgent or consequential the issue at hand. Teamwork is an important component in organizational success, yet the employee appears to be indifferent, even openly hostile to the concept of serving as part of the team. Related to the indifference problem, but also worthy of separate note, is the employee's constant absenteeism. Indeed, the employee has so rarely shown up to work at planet Earth in recent years that it is not unusual for his colleagues to question if he even exists. This naturally results in a lack of trust, which is a key element of successful teamwork. Conclusion. While the employee's creative gifts and other strong powers are not to be denied, the company is deeply concerned about his tendencies towards angry outbursts, indifference towards work, and absenteeism. We feel that the employee needs to sit down and contemplate how serious he is about contributing to planet Earth's welfare and whether he intends to become a more productive and cooperative presence here. Otherwise, we may be forced to take drastic disciplinary measures. We would highly recommend the aforementioned anger management sessions, which will teach the employee more socially acceptable methods of dealing with negative emotions, as well as more positive workplace traits, such as empathy, cooperation, and good sportsmanship. If these issues cannot be corrected in the near future, planet Earth may be forced to look for a replacement for the employee, or if a satisfactory replacement cannot be found, to terminate the position itself permanently and take its chances without it. End of review. So there was my uh, performance review for God. Um, here is, again, I have a novel and a CD for sale, and I will put a bunch of info about that in the chat. Thank you. I love it. I love it. And thank you so much, 
Jeff for coming and featuring today. Uh, we, anytime we get to hear from you is awesome. And congratulations on all your success and all the touring and all that stuff. I'm very, very happy for you. I cannot wait to see you in New York City. Uh, you know, Jeff, uh, Stephen, Terry, all, we're all gonna be in New York City, Christy. So, so come out if you're there. All right, um, welcome, um, Nema. Am I saying that correctly? Yes, that's right. Nema. Welcome, welcome to the Word Is Right. Where are you coming to us from? London, UK. <laughs> UK. It's very late then your time. It is. I'm a terrible insomniac. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay. We love insomniacs if you're in the UK. Uh, well, the floor is all yours. Please take your time and welcome. Thank you. Um, I'd like to share a couple of poems with you. The first one is from my upcoming book. I've shared the link in the chat. On the Grind. Dressed in the threads of adulthood, forging the bonds that bind, together in troubled times when you can't see past the wood, harvesting and investing, delayed gratification, grafting out of your station, consume time without digesting, dreams of someday, get your foot on the property ladder, save on indulgences and work harder, all work and no play, put in the hours to rise, a promotion or bonus for Jack, greasing the cogs to pick up the slack, strangled by the tie that ties. Grind your bones to make his bread in a suit suited for ambition, silence mental health attrition. There is no success for the dead, sacrifice for the future. Feather your pension to cushion the blow, retire abroad in a rustic chateau, Ida down for the stupor, a partner to shoulder the burden, a mortgage to swallow your labor, life's force fueling the conveyor, together picking out curtains. Thank you. And my second poem. I just have to give you some love. Woo, woo, woo. Okay. Thank you. The second poem is one that I wrote when I was in the crazy throes of menopause. So um, I hope you, you like this one. Let's bring it up. Yeah, here we go. And this one is called Beige. She is of an age, wavering between old and young, age to others, but appealing to some. She knows what happens when you cross the border. Will she tenderly collect cats and become a hoarder, possessing the periphery like a blue rinse ghost, dining alone at home on baked beans on toast with only the TV to a sword? The first time she heard Madam, she looked over her shoulder. Surely he meant someone older. As he handed over the change, coyly smiling during the exchange, it's all right, I like an older woman. Resignedly accepting older, maybe a Mrs. Robinson greedily grabbing her fun to prove she's far from done, her experience making her bolder. Age isn't just a number, but the weariness she carries, the best life she tarries. There is no inclination left to socialize and drunkenly party, mingling with the alluring and arty, bucket lists just an encumber. She does not seek romance or desire or the feelings it allegedly inspires or that demands too much effort, boring tete-a-tetes and support, someone else to prop up and carry for bringing out the handcuffs to marry as the elements diffuse the fire. Would they sit facing one another at the dining room table, speech failing and unable? to find the words to describe the veiled emptiness inside, echoes of child mirth possessing the abyss of an empty nest, silently gulping down titbits, the nothingness of two tortured twits, neither one fooling the other, meaningless sex and booty calls to empower and enthrall, are without interest or charm, sweaty clenched hands palm to palm, she distractedly considered what to cook as his clammy exploding body shook, cigarette stains observing from the walls. 
She knows she is of an age when she has given all she has to give and has found the humility to forgive those who took without giving the grudges that tainted life's living, the optimism once believed in as she slips into the beige. Thank you. Let's go, let's go. Yes, Nema, thank you so much for being an insomniac and for being <laughs> up late tonight. I do apologize for being a bit under the weather, uh, but I we're very glad to have made your acquaintance and please come back. Please come to different Word is Right events. We have shows every day of the week, just about here, uh, different, you. lots of different things, different times. Thank you for having me. I look forward to coming again. Yes. And uh, since uh, since Nayla is <laughs> in London, uh, I'd like to point out that I am doing a tour in the UK in October with Skylar Winter. The closest we're getting to London is Worcester, but if you want to take a train out, uh, I'll be there. I'd love to. Sounds I'll amazing. Put, I'll put the uh, general details in the chat right now then. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. Yes, this is how we network, right? This is, yes, UK tour, lots of stuff happening. Uh, very, very exciting. Um, Jeff is hitting New York before he goes to the UK. So yes, awesome. If anything you can do to hook him up, will be, I'm sure, much appreciated. All right, we got Shocky G, Kristen Patton, Slagathor, and we'll finish up uh, with Stephen Blaine uh, tonight, who I'm so excited. Um, I'm usually way more animated. I'm feeling very under the weather tonight. My apologies, but I'm very excited to be here. And I thank you all for being here. Shocky, you have the floor. All right. Um, so lately I've been trying to practice actual poetry to be a real poet. And I found um, someone had done this form the other day. I guess it's called Absidarian. And so I tried to write a poem in that. It's called The ABCs of America. Again, another African American assassinated. Black boys beat blue by bad badges. Can't consider choices, call crime consequence. Doomed, deadly decisions disturbing the di diaspora. Even ebony eaves enter eyes emptying fire. Fuck freedom, forced fatality. Gun toting good guys, greedy for triggers. Happy having hateful hearts inside. Incarcerated, imitated, never intimidated. Justice juggling justified jurisdictions. Ku Klux Klan killing kings, kids, and kin. Lost loved ones losing life in spite of mourning many. Mothers make memories, not noticing new neighbors, often oppressing outsiders. Officer, please protect people. Quit quieting cues of questions, resisting rhetoric, re realize racist. Society shuns sisters, sexually suppressed. Testing traumas, tending to tears, viciously violating rights, we're all victims. World waiting with wonder for an exchange. Xenophobes, not xenial, acting xenagogues. Youth yearning, yelling out for Zion. Zealous zygotes like Zephyr have more freedom. Let's get that alliteration, Shocky! Oh my God, yeah. let's go. I challenge you guys to do that, that's hard. <coughs> that, was, that was a powerhouse. She, right? And Shocky is a part of our Word is Right family. So yes, we're very excited for to have her. All right, we got Kristen followed by Slagathor, New Mexicans bringing it tonight. And then we'll have Stephen Blaine finish us off. So don't go anywhere. If you have never heard the magic that is Stephen Blaine, you need to stick around. Uh, it is an incredible way to end tonight. Uh, so Marissa had requested that I do uh, the gay one. So, um, so let's just keep the gay shit happening, I guess. Um, <clears throat> I've never had a problem with oppression, segregation, alienation. My skin color is the right shade to color in the Hispanic box because that's where I feel I fit. A born and raised New Mexican with the Rio Grande and mi sangre no in school taught Spanish eye could be in any crowd. The thugs, the clowns, the jocks, the preps, the cheerleaders, the goths, the nerds, the girls, the boys. And color and cultura, cultura was never a problem. It wasn't until I became the gay one that I realized that there was a problem with me. The stares from strangers as I hold my lover's hand there, nonverbal communication screaming, that is not normal. 
as they speed walk away in the opposite direction or sneer as I pass by. The ladies at El Super, mira, una lesbiana, cuidado, they'd say. I reply, si, está bien, quiere las frutas no más. And don't get me started on public displays of affections. I can't do what straight couples do without there being a remark or two or questions about how we have sex. The assumption always involved scissors, which is rather dull if you ask me. And my clothes have gotten me in trouble on more than one occasion. The assault in 2015, and I'm often mistaken for a man. I've been called sir and apologize to when they see my long hair or hear the slight femininity in my voice. I've even had people request a different table while out to dinner or clutch their spouse's hand as I pass by. Like my gayness is somehow contagious, like there's some kind of vaccination to save you, to save us. Let's be real. If I really wanted your girl, I'm sure I could take her. Sooner with my southern southwestern charm, nine mile drive, central cruises, New Mexico sunsets and sunrises. I could touch her in ways you would never figure out unless she points them out to you. And even then you'd need a bit of education. There's a reason love and fuck are four letter words. And I'm gonna do both. I will cook her dinner and do the dishes and dessert is always on the menu first. I will go shopping with her and she will never know how much I hate it, especially when she makes me hold her purse. She could take her fitness classes and try her fad diets while I sit at the coffee shop and write poetry where she will admire me from the window because lust, that's easy. It's love that not everyone can accept. I've never had a problem with fitting in, but in every situation, I feel awkward, out of place, like there is something wrong with me. My confidence is not as strong and bold as it used to be because coming out wasn't scary until it happened. Loving her wasn't a problem until it happened. Being the gay one wasn't a problem until it happened. And then I realized that the strongest people I know made it through oppression, segregation, alienation, and those good history books tell me so. And my friends and their ancestors, and todo mi gente, Tell me so. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Give it up for Kristen Cotton, everybody. Ooh. Ooh. Great. That's my friend. Love go find her. Follow her by her book. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, you got to keep writing so we can get another book going. Let's go, right? We're not stopping. <clears throat> All right. Next up, we have another New Mexican. Sligator Atencio está en la casa. And then after Slagathor, we'll have Stephen Blaine uh, finish us out tonight. Uh, so I, was, I wasn't planning, I don't know if you can hear me. <laughs> you don't have to read it if you don't want to. Oh no, you're fine. I just pulled something. It's uh, my rendition of my, my uh, Rudy Francisco's My Honest Poem. So oh, this, yes. this is gonna be my honest poem. It's an exercise that I had did to get me back into writing a long time ago. and. I oh, know it just feels right. And then a little short one after this, more up. But um, I was born February 29th. That makes me a Pisces. I don't really know much about astrology, but I'm only conditioned to flinch when I hear someone's a Gemini. I'm 5'4 and I live with more weight on myself than I'm comfortable with. I don't know how to do simple things without always questioning them. And I'm a sucker for a guy with an amazing personality and a good sense of humor. I'm still learning how to be myself. I'm often too comfortable being myself around complete strangers. I also often become a complete stranger around myself when I'm around somebody I really want to be comfortable with. I was born on a day that doesn't exist most years and I pretended I never existed ever since. Water is my beverage of choice. I've been told I'm too genuine. People say that my combination of being too comfortable around complete strangers and being too genuine makes me socially awkward. Maybe because I am. And secretly, I get really panicked when a stranger kindly responds to me. I have an odd fascination with cliffs and trees and I assume it's because I find myself longing something secure enough for me to take a chance on. Things that won't make me question my footing in a leap of faith. That, that's, why I often, that's why I often fall in love with who people are and not how they look. I know it sounds impossible, but I'm a true romantic. And to be honest, sometimes I feel like it's impossible to love me. See, relationships often remind me that I'm not afraid of dying. 
but I catch myself being too afraid of living because before I know it, I lose time without being able to control it. I find myself being reckless. Yesterday, I tripped over my ego and landed on my humility and I found myself at square one and had to ground myself again. Now I can't distinguish a delusion from reality. And I've, been, I've never been in the military, but I've got this medal of honor. I got it from telling people things that I'm not too proud of for the sake of their own choices. I know it sounds weird, but sometimes I wonder what the streets say about me when I'm not around. I wonder what the sidewalks would do when they find out that I long for a home. I've got a car that's overflowing with my ideals and a high mileage trying to escape my past. I'm afraid if I take you in a ride in it, you look behind us, see all the carcasses of all the versions I used to be. You'd collect the bodies, force me to take them to a taxidermist and make me assemble a museum of all the things that I do not want to remember. Hi. My name is Joanna. I enjoy chocolate, quiet mountaintops, and laughing with anyone and everyone, but I only allow myself to cry with the sky. I have this nocturnal confidence. I have a hydro-powered smile. My hobbies include making knitting my bitch, enjoying in editing my traumas into comprehensive poems, and trying to convince myself I have a body all the time. I don't know much, but I do know that death is silent. I know that death is full of peace. I know that death is waiting to befriend me, that always reminds me that we have more living to do before it does. That was my honest poem. Oh man, let's go. I mean, your mics, give it up for Slega Tora Tensio. Yeah. I have one little tiny one just because I okay. like it. <laughs> um, it's just a hopeful future. Years from now, rain will be flowing down my window. Lilo and Stitch will echo through our tiny home while you sleep on my chest. And instead of just crying when it echoes, I'm lost. I will anticipate the tears that follow along with, this is my family. And I found them all on my own. Thank you. Oh, oh you're yeah. cute. Oh my goodness, I love it. Like, yes, take that Rudy Francisco poem, his My Honest poem and deconstruct it and make it your own. I think um, uh, Slegathor's uh, rendition is incredible. Um, <clears throat> thank you so much for coming and reading. And uh, we got to get you here for a feature sometime down the road. Don't forget this week at Word is Right is this the fifth day of the week, all week. So we have specialty shows, uh, a special erotic show on Monday, a special uh workshop with uh with Shane Maynard doing video to your poetry on Tuesday and we have a fundraising a workshop with Jane Spoken Word on Wednesday night so please uh dip into the pot that is the word is right and all the great things that we're bringing on the fifth days of the month and uh, to close this out is is oh my god St Stephen Blaine I'm so excited you're here and we get to see you in New York City and get to have Get to have you for all to ourselves while we're there i feel like <laughs> but maybe not we'll share you a little bit uh but anyways he's gonna close us out thank you all so much for being here and steven feel free to drop all your stuff in the chat y'all follow him please he's on spotify you do not want to miss this man marissa uh, considering you know you're not 100 percent you're, you're amazing so uh thank you You know, you just you just you just put it all out there and, and, and you give everything. It's, it's very, very beautiful. Uh, I lost a good friend of mine this week and I've been experimenting with these uh, just just uh, shooting video and then uh, crafting a poem uh, and uh, and then adding music to it. So and it's, it's really fun. So I've got one uh, that I just it's it's I think it's. Uh, beta. <laughs> I think it's got one more to go, but I'd like to share it with you. Can I share your, uh, my screen? Okay. okay. Yep, there you go. Okay, so here it is. Hopefully it works. Oh, oh there we go. You gotta share your sound. There's no sound. Yes. Oh, 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 okay. It's okay. We can start over. It's just beta. We're in beta mode. Gotcha. It's, it's got way. No, I, I have to. I have to um, enable the uh, share the sound. I'm sorry. Hopefully, you can be able to. I do got that. it. Okay. I got it now. Uh, I just have to open it again. Uh, one more second. <laughs> okay. Now let me share. 
texture of sound. Let's share. This will work. Thank you very much. I like to walk along the shore The waves and wind my soul restore Majestic swirls cause time to still And I surrender to their will Sometimes there are fish to see And on the sand too much to breathe I'm frequently the only one Who walks along beneath the sun I'm pondering this question now I'd like to ask if you'll allow When those you love do leave this plane Will they forever yet remain? As all good things must surely end So does a coffee with my friend And I can't help but feel forlorn So I'll just walk the shore very upbeat for being so sad <laughs> it got all, all up in my emotions Steven do you have another one you'd like to do uh <clears throat> no that, that's that that's uh that will do it <clears throat> okay uh, yeah. well I'm sending big hugs my friend thank you where can people find you follow you all that good stuff at, at my name stevenblaine.com S-T-E-V-E-N B-L-A-N-E dot com. Everything's there. Thank you so much. You can find them on Spotify too. <laughs> yes. It's true. <laughs> and if you need anything, feel free to reach out. I'm here. Um, grief is one of those odd things, right? And there's no timeline for it. But um, anyone who wants to come and uh, express their grief uh, is welcome to do so here. And I'm sending lots of prayers and good healing energy to you thank you all right y'all thank you so much for being here at the word is right let's do our our toast grab your cup your glass whatever you have and i will toast you all um adieu this evening <laughs> yes please uh support the <laughs> there you go yes that's slagathor has got the easy cheesy all right <clears throat> please uh come back to the word is right check out our events support our features tonight thank you all so much for being here um, here's to health in your company and one for the lasses. Let's drink and be merry, all of our glasses. Let's drink and be merry, bad thoughts to refrain, for we may or may not ever all be here again. This has been the Word Is Right's double feature open mic featuring Jeff Cottrell, Kristen Patton. I'm your host, Marissa Prada. We'll see you all next time. Thank you, Marissa. Feel well. Marissa. Thanks Feel for well. everyone for coming. Thanks, everyone. Night, Thanks, Marissa. Have a good night, everyone.